Welcome to the second part of our lesson in kinematics. Last time we talked about the one-dimensional kinematics and we have learned the concept of displacement, velocity, instantaneous velocity, acceleration, and instantaneous acceleration. We also have the four kinematic equation or motion equation for constant acceleration along a straight line. We also apply this motion equation in different problems and also in pre-fall. For our lesson today, we'll talk about kinematics in two dimension. Our learning objectives are understand displacement, velocity, and acceleration in two dimensions. Use equations of kinematics in two dimensions. Understand the concept of projectile motion to solve problems regarding projectile motion. Comprehend relative velocity. And lastly, solve problems regarding relative velocity. Our learning topics or our topic outline are displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Equations of kinematics in two dimensions, projectile motion, and relative velocity. Displacement and velocity and acceleration. In previous week, with the concept of displacement, velocity, and acceleration are used to describe an object moving in one dimension. There are also situations in which the motion is along a curve path that lies in a plane. Such dimensional motion can be described using the same concepts. The displacement of the car in the figure have drawn from the initial position are not at time TO to the final position R at time T. The magnitude of the displacement R is the shortest distance between the two dimensions. So here, we have the car starting from this point and after some time, it travel along the curve and the final position is here. Our displacement vector starting from the origin, we have R0 for the initial position and vector R for our final position. The shortest distance between the two points is our displacement or delta R. We know that delta displacement is the change in position. and also a vector. So in this case, our delta R is the difference between the uh, vector R and the initial vector R. And we have to operate this periodically. So we can see here that the sum of R0 and the displacement is equivalent 
to the final position. For the average velocity, which is symbol is V, and since we are dealing with vector, we have to put the arrow at the top. It's a displacement divided by the elapsed time. or delta r over delta t. Then, for our instantaneous velocity of the car, so again, we have to limit the ratio of displacement and time as, a, as the change in time approximately zero. which is equal to the derivative of displacement with respect to time. For our average acceleration, Similarly, with one dimension, it is the change in velocity divided by the elapsed time. And to get the instantaneous velocity, Again, we have to limit this ratio as the change in time approximately uh, approaching zero. Therefore, the, the, uh, the acceleration is equivalent to the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So since we are dealing with two dimension, we're analyzing the situation or the problem separately with the x component and y component. And always take note of this, the displacement vector and acceleration are vectors. So now, let's have our example. In a football game, a kicker attempts a field goal. The ball remains in contact with a kicker's boat for 0 0.05 seconds, during which time it experiences an acceleration of 340 meters per second squared. The ball is launched at an angle of 51 degrees above the ground. Determine the horizontal and vertical component of the launch velocity. So let's write our given. First, we have time, which is 0 0.05 seconds. Then we have the acceleration the magnitude of the acceleration is 340 meter per second squared. Remember our symbol for acceleration, since it is a vector, we have to put the arrow 
at the top. But since our given is a magnitude, so we can put the uh, we can put it inside inside a bar, which means it is magnitude representing magnitude or simply a for acceleration. Then we have our theta angle of 51 degrees above the ground. So we are looking for the horizontal and vertical below a component of the velocity or simply let's just write vx for horizontal component and vy for vertical for vertical component so let's solve for this problem Using our definition for acceleration, which is equivalent to the change in velocity over change in time, which is equal to the final velocity minus initial velocity over the in final time minus initial time. So since As illustrated in the problem, the ball remains, uh, as said in the problem, we can say that the initial velocity is equivalent to zero. And uh, the change in time is simply equal to 0 0.05 seconds. Therefore, we have the velocity, the final velocity is equal to the acceleration times time. Which is equal to, substitute the value, Therefore, we have the final velocity of 17 meter per seconds. Now we can solve now for the horizontal and vertical component using our given angle of 51 degrees. So if we're going to illustrate, The given angle is 51 degrees above the ground. Therefore, we can illustrate that here is the Vx and here is the Vy. So let's solve for Vx using trigonometric function of cosine. So our Vx is equal to 10.70 meter per second. And for Vy, let's use the trigonometric function sine. Which is equal to 13.21 meter per second. So here's our answer.
on our example, we have in a diving to a depth of 70, 750 meter, an elephant seal also moves 460 meter due east for his of his starting point. What is the magnitude of the seal's displacement? So let's illustrate the problem. So you have here a depth of 750 meter and an elephant seal moves 420 meter due east. Okay, so we're looking for the magnitude of the seal's displacement. So starting from this point, going to its final position, which is 400, 750 meter. So this is the displacement of the elephant seal. To solve for this one, Use trigonometric function. I uh, use Pythagorean theorem. So R is equal to square root of four sixty meter squared plus seven hundred fifty meter squared. Let's calculate. Therefore, the displacement is 879 meter. Okay, so that's how we solve for displacement, velocity, and acceleration dealing in two dimensions. Now, let's check your understanding. Solve this problem and comment your answer.